Hey guys, Mr. Riz here. I'm going to help you out on the second part of the 1.4 notes in calculus today. What we're going to be looking at is uh, looking to see if we can determine the removable or non-removable discontinuity just by looking at the function. So the way that we can determine that is, if you remember, we're going to look at the denominator of our function. So if the denominator can factor out and be canceled, we would describe that as removable discontinuity. If the denominator cannot, we would say that this discontinuity is non-removable, meaning that the graph would have a vertical asymptote. So the easiest way to always do is just to plug this into a graphing calculator and just visually to see, is this a vertical asymptote or not? All right, but we, we're not gonna try to do that. We're gonna go back and look at this stuff here to see if we can uh, strengthen our math skills. So let's start off with the first problem here. Um, if I look at this denominator here, it is just X. So we could say this is discontinuous at x equals zero, because that's the only time that that denominator could equal zero. And if we look, the top cannot factor out at x, we can't at all, so we would say this is non-removable discontinuity. Pretty easy. Okay, next problem here, we got 3x minus cosine x. Well, 3x, if we just kind of separate this, is does not have a denominator. Cosine doesn't have a denominator as well. Um, so this function would never actually have a denominator. It would never have a discontinuous point. So we would say that this function is continuous. There is no point in here where the graph just wouldn't be able to plug in, or an x wouldn't be able to plug in. So we'd be able to evaluate every single point on the graph. All right, next, let's look at this one here. I could factor the bottom to an x times x minus 1. So we can say this is discontinuous at x equals zero for this x here and we could say that it's discontinuous for x equals one because if we plug zero in the denominator is zero if we plug in one the denominator is also zero well our zero here that's affected by our, this one here does get removed here so we would say that this is removable discontinuity for x equals zero and x equal one never can get removed can never be factored out and this would be non-removable. So on a graph, we would have a hole at zero and a vertical asymptote at one. All right, we'll keep doing more of these to kind of get the hang of this, and hopefully you find it kind of easy afterwards. All righty. Next, let's look at this problem here. We got x over x squared plus one. And let's see, is there any way we can make x squared plus one equal to zero? All right, so that would be when x squared equals negative 1, and we cannot really, in the real number sense, take the square root of negative 1. So there's no way that this denominator could ever equal 0, so we would say that this is a continuous function. All right, the denominator will never equal 0. All right, now let's look at this next one. We know the top is an x plus 2. The bottom, all right, can we factor this? What do numbers multiply together to give us negative 10, add together to get negative 3? That'd be an x minus 5 and an x plus 2. So this does have discontinuity at x equals positive 5 and x equals negative 2. If we look, the positive 5 can never be factored out, so this would be non-removable for positive 5. And for negative 2, though, it gets to cancel out from the top, and we would say that is removable for negative 2. So there's a hole at negative 2 and a vertical asymptote at 5. All right, let's keep this going. We're getting the hang of this, hopefully. I always find this something easy. Okay, piecewise functions. All right, so piecewise functions, we, we kind of check inside of the piecewise functions. Can we have discontinuity? We have x and x squared. Both of those don't have a denominator, so we have nothing to worry about. What we need to do here is to see like if the potential here at one, if there is a jump at one. So we have potential discontinuity at one, and we'll determine what that is when we plug those numbers in. So let's plug them in. So if I plug one in for the top one, what, that would just be one, one. And if I plug one in for the bottom one, I'd get one squared, which is also one. So both of these points would line up perfectly. We'd have a solid dot at 1, 1, and then an open dot at 1, 1 as well that would match up perfectly. So this would be a continuous function. 
So there's no hole. All right, let's look at this next one here, another piecewise function. So both of these functions by themselves are continuous. They don't have a denominator, nothing we need to worry about. What we need to do now is to double check. When we plug two in for this equation, all right, half of two is one plus one, that is two. And then when I plug in two for this other equation here, three minus two is one. So what ends up happening is like we have a graph here that has a solid dot at two, two, and we have an open dot at 2, 1. So there is a jump. So this is discontinuous at x equals 2. That's where our potential discontinuity happened. And then when we look at our points here, they are non-removable. It's a jump. They do not match up at all. Okay. Let's keep this going. All right, what about uh cosine cosecant of 2x well hmm. all right one thing about cosecant is that we could rewrite this as one over the sine of 2x and so now we look at that now this is an expression that has a fraction and we could say we got to figure out when sine of 2x could equal zero well i'm going to look at just specifically a unit circle here and so we would get, uh, this would be when 2x is equal to the sine inverse of 0. So when is the sine or the y equal to 0? We would have two spots, maybe two more. Then look at a unit circle rule well, that'd be at 0 and at pi. And so this would be discontinuous at x equals 0, if I divide that by here, this one and also x equals pi over 2. All right, and if we look at both of those, maybe let's look at the graph of this one, but these would both be non-removable. I think once we get to like trig and weird ones, we're going to have to kind of go back to our old tried and true methods of looking at Desmos. So if I just type in cosecant of 2x, yeah, we can see that these are non-removable jumps that happen. Now, technically, we probably should say, like, you know, for every time plus k pi, but I just want you guys to name them on a unit circle. All right, next, let's look at this. Um, this is the greatest integer, not the absolute value of the absolute value, but the greatest integer function, which is that in here anywhere. Sure it is. Miscellaneous. Mm. Let's see, it's got to be here somewhere. Or I think I, they call it probably, is it floor? Or it's this, yeah, it's the floor function. X minus eight. So if we look at here, we would have discontinuous points at every positive integer. So the greatest integer, what it does is like, all right, if I plug in 10, 10 minus eight is two. So if I plug in 10, I get two. Maybe let's look at the a chart here. So if I plug in 10, I get 2. If I plug in 11, I get 3. Plug in 12, it's fine. Where it gets a little tricky is like, what about decimals? Like 10.5. 10.5 is 2 because 10.5 minus 8 is 2.5. The greatest integer that 2.5 has passed is 2. All right, what about 10.9? That is also 2. 10.99999 is also 2 because we get 2.999. It doesn't become 3 until we subtract eight and it's exactly three. So these are all jumps on every integer. So these are non-removable jumps at every integer. So that one's a little bit tricky. But just to show you guys too, we can always go back and just use Desmos to help us out to find these. Like if I wanted to go back to this one here, you guys remember we had like a hole in a, a vertical asymptote. So x plus two over x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now it's easy to find the vertical asymptote at five. We still have to use our denominator because we wouldn't really see it on Desmos unless we slide on over to see that there is a hole. Come on, there should be a hole. Or is it negative two? Is that negative two? Isn't it? Yeah, negative two. So those are always kind of hard to find the holes on a graph. All right, guys, hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, this last section and the first one really work together smoothly, and then we're going to finish it off next.
I'll see you guys later.